Hello, I'm. This is um, a continuation, part B, if you will, of my last uh, video that I put out there, which was um, about morality and the law. You know how they relate to each other, and it isn't like I'm. I want to clarify my previous video, video or correct it in any way. I, I stand by it completely. It's just that this is such a long and big subject. If I hadn't bored you to death yet, I should bore you to death now on this. Because I got more to say, and I didn't get it all out. That was already running long. What I wanted to say, first of all, if you remember about morality and the law, I talked about how the law, what what makes morality? How do we decide? What is the, the basis of morality? And, and that is something that I think I didn't really clarify real well there. And that is, um, when I was talking about the law, a lot of people look to the law for morality. And the reason that they look to the law for morality is because it's difficult sometimes for people to make up their mind by themselves. And I was pointing out that many times the law isn't really even moral by what I consider be moral. It, it has to do with... Um, you know, whether or not you have a just society. You know, do you think, you know, like I was talking about when they used to have, have the right of aristocracy to take the maiden heads and so forth, that wasn't just. Or Adolf Hitler killing all the Jews, that wasn't just. That was an unjust society, but the law said that's what it was. The law said that this is the what morality is according to us. So you can't look to the law for morality. And, and a lot of people like to look to um, the books for morality, like the Bible or the Koran or the the Torah or the uh, Bhagavad Gita, as it's called. Um, what what these books are usually pretty good. They because they have dealt with age old morality, and some of that the people that you know they refined the morality into those books so that if you have a question in your moral issue you know you could go to one of those books and you know Plato's Republic or whatever and you could find something that you can meditate about within those books that might deal with your moral subject but I, I want to point out that you can't rely totally on those books either you know it, even though it says in Ecclesiastes that nothing is new under the sun, there are new things under the sun, actually, you know, with morality, like things like in vitro fertilization or, you know, sex change operations or or those things that keep people alive on respirators, which are moral questions that could not be dealt with with a 2,000-year-old morality that's in the Bible. And, you know, the Bible's not always right anyway. Some of the, you know, the, if you look in Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter 21, verse 16, or is it chapter 16, verse 21, it, it says in Deuteronomy that it's okay to rape certain women that you capture in war. <laughs> That's, you know, not just. So you, you have to think for yourself about what is moral and what is just. And a lot of people have that's why they go to these sources is it's so hard it's so difficult for many people to contemplate and decide about morality and um, you know you have to have a basis of morality in yourself and if you're a little perplexed it's not a bad idea to go to a authoritative source you know sometimes it's a good idea to go to a, a, another person uh, somebody that you respect somebody that you think is wise and ask them questions about moral issues but you have but I think what is the basis the very basis of morality that's the question you know that the, some people say that there is no morality without God and uh, I think maybe that has you know that's almost begging the question in a way but that might be partly true you know that what God is is a level of comprehension that is above and higher than what our level of comprehension is. And so that includes the moral 
and spiritual uh, comprehension. You know, the, so God has a higher level. It is a higher level of moral comprehension than we are. So you can go to God, but but I I think the problem there is that, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like this. Very few people actually really know. As a matter of fact, maybe nobody really knows what God it really wants. You know, it's for one thing, it, it, his comprehend its comprehension is so much greater that it's impossible for people to have a brain big enough to understand that comprehension. So that's sort of uh, where we're at with that. But here's the thing I think is important. There's two things that are important when you're dealing in morals and where it comes from. One being that you're trying to be moral. That, that your goal is to be good. That and your goal is to be kind, and your goal is to be, you know, magnanimous and have a big picture and think about what is the duty of yourself as it relates to the larger society. If you're thinking in that direction, then that is a lar a lot of what is the basis of your morality. Uh, but not everybody always does think in that direction. As a matter of fact, sometimes. Everybody doesn't think in that direction. You know, I, I, here's an example I, I think um, uh, that I was thinking about. But remember a few years back in Cleveland when there was this armored car who was at the Federal Reserve Bank and they accidentally somehow dropped one of the bags of money out of the back of the armored car and drove away. And there on the sidewalk was a bag of money with over $100,000 sitting there in the public sidewalk. And some poor dude came along and found this bag. And, and I'm talking somebody who wasn't even close to being middle. I don't think he was middle class. He was poor. He had, a, he had an apartment and he had a, a part-time job, I think. But he found a bag with over $100,000 in it. And he picked it up and he carried it home. And he, then the people found out that they lost that money. And they was all over the news. Please return the money if you found it. Now, my friends and I had a good time talking about that and laughing about what we would do if we had found that bag with $100,000. And who do you think it is and what do you think he's doing with it? And what would you do? And, you know, I, we were all thinking, like, how would you spend money like that? Because, you know, the law has it so that it, if you spend $10,000, usually, you have to have it reported by the people you spend it with to the government. And a lot of times when people rob a bank, that's how they get caught. They, they spend more money than they can justifiably say that they had. Or, you know, the same thing with drug dealers, you know. They, so, it's, so we were talking about, you know, you had to take that money and use your everyday spending. You could eat out every day. You could drive all over the place and not have to worry about gas money, you know. You could maybe buy a crummy car and have a mechanic pick it up, you know. Well, anyway, as it turns out, the guy who found the money after a few days returned the money. He gave it back. And, uh, you know, he, and a bunch of people said, that idiot. But here's a man, here's a man, who really got slapped in the face with a moral question. And the fact that he was thinking about what was the right thing to do. And he came to the conclusion that it was to return the money. That was the right thing to do. See, that, I don't think that uh, that's written about in the Quran or anything, but that question was his moral dilemma, and he went and thought about it in a moral way. See, that's the basis of morality. He didn't think about how am I going to get away with this. He thought about what is the right thing to do. Yeah, maybe you see, I know, if you're cynical, you say, well, he was afraid of getting caught. But, you know, he, if he were smart, he probably wouldn't have gotten caught. And if he were careful, he might not have gotten caught. He would have lived a little better, much better than he was living. But he was worrying about and, and suffering over the actual moral question that was involved. So that is the basis of morality. Why 
are you doing what you're doing? Is it because you're thinking about how you can get away with it and take care of yourself? Or are you thinking about what is the right thing to do? And he was a moral person. Now, now let's talk about real quickly, switch gears over here to the question of the law and morality and, and the gay marriage question. What is the basis behind people's opposition to gay marriage? Is it, a, you know, a lot of people just run right to the authority. Well, the Bible says, it, it says in two places that it's an abomination. And uh, one is that, uh, I think it says it in Deuteronomy again. And then St. Paul, who I never liked St. Paul very much. But St. Paul's quoting Deuteronomy, right? It's bad, it's evil, it's wrong. Well... The question I have, uh, you know, when when they first decided that it was bad and it's evil and it's wrong, it, we, it was because they found homosexual acts either to be disgusting or they were ashamed of themselves and their own tendencies maybe to be homosexual and they wanted to defend their own self from the temptation of homosexuality. I mean, that's the two possibilities. Now, with me, as I live in my life, you know, I, I find homosexuality to be somewhat disgusting, to be honest with you. You know, the act of two men performing a homosexual act, to me, is like really something that turns my stomach. And it makes, you know, it's like thinking about eating poop or something. It's something like that. To me. It's in that level of, of I would never do it. But, but the truth of the matter is, I have my own desires maybe toward women. And maybe some other people don't have that same desire. And the, that's, if they say that they don't have that desire, and they might find that disgusting, well, then that's their feeling about things, their personal taste about things, is different than mine. So, that's where the basis of this morality might have come from originally in, in some cases. Some people found it very, very disgusting, homosexuality, but they're not empathetic. They're not, see, they're lacking empathy. And when you lack empathy, empathy, that usually means that you are not acting in a moral fashion. See, it's hard for people to understand that. So, you know, what a lot of people do is they run right to the Bible. You know, I have no mind. I must read the Bible and follow the Bible. Well, you know, that to me, I told you what I think of that. That's just because you have the inability to consider things for yourself. You're not a moral person if you have to have somebody always point everything out to you. There has to be a sense of natural morality that you have in order for you to be a, nat a moral person. If you, have to, if you find over the course of time and people have told you and you're a psychopath or whatever, or you just don't have any moral sense whatsoever, then maybe it is a safe thing for you to follow the Bible. But very, I, I don't think that's a lot of people. I think most people do have a strong moral sense. You cannot just go to authority. You have to reason and feel and use your own moral sense. Just like you have to use your own visual sense you know you can't you can't or your own hearing you can't let other people decide what music is good for you you can't let other people decide what flavors you like in food and the same thing goes with your moral sense you have to make a decision you have to have your own moral sense and and i think if you first of all are thinking about morality that's good if you're thinking about kindness and love and decency and respect for all things then you're in the right area about morality so that's why i say that there is a trouble with people who are against gay marriage because what they are about is their own fear their own the indulgence of their own hatred their own disgust their own fear not everybody feels the same way and that this has even happened in the bible not everybody felt the same way, which is why certain people said it was a it was a abomination to be to be homosexual because they personally were disgusted by it. They could not understand how other people felt, and since they were in the position of power, they inflicted that on other people. 